This is Investigating Springs Part 2. Hello and welcome to Underdog Physics. Today we'll be looking at the results from my Investigating Springs practical. If you haven't seen Part 1, make sure you watch that first, or just keep watching this video regardless. Here are the results from that last spring extension practical I did, which I will now plot on a force extension graph. You may be wondering why our independent variable, the force, is on the y-axis, but I'll talk about that later. The blue plot is the data for spring 1, and the red plot is the data for spring 2. Straight away we can see that the two springs behave differently when subject to the same forces. Look here. 10 newtons of force results in 7.9 centimetres more extension in spring 1 than in spring 2. And in general, spring 1 extends more than spring 2 for the same forces. When we put in the lines of best fit, it's even clearer since the plot for spring 1 has a shallower gradient than the plot for spring 2. This is nothing new, since we can even see it in the original data table. But wait, there's more! Something funny is going on towards the bottom of the plot for spring 1. While our line of best fit does show that force is proportional to extension, as expected for a spring, it doesn't even go through the origin. <gasps> Don't worry. One possible explanation for this could be human error. I wasn't careful enough when I was doing my measurements. Some of my data points are a little bit off. Or maybe... Maybe... Maybe even a curve of best fit would fit this better. Like the curve you get when you first start stretching an elastic band. <sighs> Physics is weird. Anyway, before I go, take a look at this. A force causes an object to accelerate, right? So when I put a weight, a force, on the end of the spring, the end of the spring starts to accelerate but then it stops. This is because the spring is providing a force equal and opposite to the weight that's extending it. Which means that if I know the weight that's pulling on the spring, I know the force that the spring's pulling back with. This is why we plot a force against extension graph and not the other way around. Because in materials testing, it's useful to know how much of a fight a material's putting up when it's extended different amounts. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Feel free to like this video and subscribe to the channel. That's me done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm finished. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video. <laughs> this is why we plot. So, ignoring the top force. When I exert a force on the bottom of the spring, it accelerates. At least to start with. I need a mass. I don't have a mass. This doesn't make any sense.